Okay, so what are the, we'll, 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 so now we'll actually start here. Um, the characteristics of internet connections. Basically, these are all the characteristics, the who, what, when, where, why type uh, questions that you can't escape when you make a, when you make a connection to the internet. Um, the questions we ask are what devices are connecting to the internet. Uh, so there's obviously a bunch of devices that people have. Uh, uh, the one you do you connect to the internet because actually, even if you're claiming you're coming in from another location, your activity may be suspicious depending on the time of day that you're doing stuff. Um, how you are connecting. Um, there's a, there's we'll talk about that too. And why do we bother? Because you can't escape these characteristics, characteristics regardless of how you connect to the internet. Um, so there are a ton of different devices that connect to the internet, which shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Um, there, um, each of these devices can be identified uh, by using Nmap or other characteristics. Uh, so. If you know the device you, that they're using, you can then find out more information about the user. Um, so these are things just to keep in mind. Um, the thing that was crossed out, which is what, what I thought was true last time, which is uh, this is uh, a Pebble uh, watch. Uh, I thought it was actually getting access to the internet. It's actually just using a Bluetooth connection um, to your smartphone. Um, so uh, that's the reason why it's crossed out. But there are actually uh, cell phone uh, devices they can buy on Amazon, which actually have a full Android uh, operating system on there where you can browse the web and do all that cool stuff as a watch. Uh, they exist now as compared to all the other stuff which is coming shortly. It's connected to the internet, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just sending push and post notifications that have to be done through an application. There's no browser on there uh, as compared to other things which do. Um, and also, has every, in, in case, uh, no one has seen a Raspberry Pi before. Um, this is basically like a three, like a 586 level computer. So like a popular around 1998 or so. This is basically th that powerful of a machine on a breadboard like this. They go for 35 bucks. Um, and it has one gig of memory. And it's a very powerful uh, device. It's, um, it runs Debian Linux, um, which is, um, means that you have a full computer to do whatever you need to do on something that's tiny. Uh, so um, that's cool. If you want, pass it around again. Uh, it has uh, two USB ports. It has Ethernet port is powered by a micro USB cable. Uh, it has RGA video and uh, microphone out. Uh, whatever way, it's all good. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things where, like, yeah, you can have a very small footprint to be connected to the internet. Um, and <coughs> the OS runs on the SD card, by the way. So. It's a little bit weird because that's a really slow way to transfer, to, to have your operating system on, but it's just not as fast as other devices um, that they could be using. But for some reason, they decided to put the OS on the SD card. Um, so I'm not really sure why they made that decision. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a cool thing. Uh, because the other thing people are using it for is like a, what's it called, the media storage thing. Uh, because it has a HMDI uh, data connect video out on it as well. So it has like this full 1080xp type video processor on it. So it's, 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 it's a very cool device. Uh, so uh, when do you connect is another way that you can identify users. 
Um, this image here, which unfortunately isn't coming out super well, maybe if you have this presentation open on your local desktop, you can see it a little bit better. But there is a sliding window of uh, the sunlight, and sort of like the sunlight is going through. When it gets darker here, um, uh, it was a bluish color. That's basically when uh, the amount of ping traffic is going down. Uh, when it's the brighter, redder color, that's when there's more machines are available on the internet. It also happens to correspond to when uh, the daylight is coming through uh, as well. Uh, the, that's, uh, the image is from the internet census 2012 github.com, which someone used a whole bunch of zombie machines to ping the internet and do a bunch of other identifying techniques to uh, look at basically the whole of the internet. And it's a very interesting data set that they uh, generated and produced. So you just to back up for a second, but like if you know the basically the profile of the user, if the user is connecting from a machine in another time zone, when they should be asleep, that might be an indication that it's someone that's trying to hide where they're coming from. That's basically what, what I'm trying to say there. Um, how do you know? So the other thing you have to keep in addition to the time is how you connect. There's a bunch of different ways to actually connect to the internet. There's the old dial-up AOL connection, uh, which works, but it's obviously very slow. You have DSL connections and cable connections, which are in a sort of medium speed range. You have FIOS, which is obviously very fast. Um, and there's other ways of connecting as well. The implications of the speed is sort of an implication of how much money pe people have to spend on their internet connection, and also if they're in a city versus in a suburb or something like that. Um, these are a couple of other ways of looking at, uh, of connecting to the internet. You, you do have uh, satellite uh, communica communications available. Uh, they are very expensive, but they work. Uh, uh, so that's one option. Um, and the other thing there, too, is that the way that they uh, request Traffic, the, the way that they request traffic is sort of unique too. So um, generally, uh, very slow upload speeds, but fast download speeds. Or on some the way that it works, that some uh, some satellite providers is, is they actually want you to dial into a uh, over a 56k modem to request content from the internet, but then all of your download activity is downloaded off a of satellite. So it's a little weird there. Uh, the Verizon hotspot is uh, is a cell phone, basically. It's either 3G or 4G, uh, and yeah, it's um, that's uh, it's basically cell phone speed, which doesn't too which which isn't too bad. Um, but yeah, that's um, there's a lot of but using your cell phone as sort of a gateway that's re that's pretty popular. Way of doing that. Um, um, this is a unique uh, case in the Caribbean. Uh, basically, in the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, their infrastructure is reasonably poor. Like they lose power about once or twice a week or so for no really good reason, uh, for a couple of minutes, which makes things interesting for anyone that's in the restaurant business. But that's a side point. Uh, <laughs> But one of the things that they do do is they have radio towers because of all the issues they have with the uh, wires uh, as a fast means of connecting to the internet. Uh, I found this out when I, when I was on uh, uh, my honeymoon in the Caribbean too. So it works out. Um, so basically that's the summary of the characteristics of connecting to the internet. And the important thing uh, to remember is that you can't escape, you just can't escape those characteristics of connecting to the internet regardless. Does anyone have any questions at this point? <laughs>